In a previous short video, I did uh, what was called footwork, botching footwork. And the idea here is to be able to come from a central point and be able to make your feet move in a certain pattern without crossing themselves up. Um, for those of you who have this uh, piece of video, you'll probably see what's going to happen next. What I'm going to do now is work on the hand parts of this and how to use the footwork to get specific strikes together. In this case, I'm going to start hands up left side forward in what's typically called either a fighting stance or a neutral bow. From here, I'm going to make sure that my stance is approximately 45 degrees at an angle to my target. That allows me to use the back hand to push forward and reach actually as far, if not farther, than the front hand. And that's one of the little tricks of learning how to extend beyond what another person thinks you can. So from here, we start. Punch, here's my jab. Jab's off the front hand. I actually raise the shoulder, tuck the chin in, keep this hand touching my head. Now for those of you who are beginners, touch your ear. Grab it if you have to, anything to keep that hand from moving because once it moves, you're open. With the elbow, if your elbow comes out like this, you're going to wind up with some broken ribs. So, tight in, tight here, tight here. This is the position we want to look at. We want to look at this position here. Tucked in, hunched, shoulders raised to protect the chin and the lower part of the head. Okay, Hands up, elbows guarding the ribs, hands guarding each side of the face. Now, some people will say, well, if you get hit on the street and somebody hits your bare hands and you know, punches you in the face with it, it's going to hurt. Absolutely right, but it won't hurt near as much as if they contact without hitting your hand first. Let your hand get hit. It's a buffer. So, as we do this, we're actually shuffling forward just a little bit by bending the front knee and pushing off the back leg, and this describes the jab. Here, you'll notice that when I do the jab, my recoil is as fast as my execution. That is absolutely imperative. The reason for this is you don't want to leave your hands away from your face very long at all. So, the shorter the time that your hands are out there, the safer you are. So from here, one of the many mistakes people make when they punch is they'll drop their hand just before they punch. The other thing they'll do is they'll drop the back hand. Another thing, they'll bring an elbow out on either side. It's very common to see people punch like this. They'll bring the elbow out. Why? Poor training. That's a telegraph. So if I do this, I'm telegraphing my intentions. If I do this, I'm telegraphing. It may be hard for the person to know exactly what I'm doing, but they know I'm going to do something and they'll simply step out of range or they'll close the distance very fast. So, when we do this, straight out, come back. Straight out, come back. Always keep the knees bent. A strike here, one, bring back. The cross, the most important thing about the cross is keeping the front knee bent. If it starts to straighten out, like I see a lot of beginners do, they'll do this. And wonder why they can't reach, because their front leg is straight. Keep the front leg bent. That allows you to reach much farther than you could any other way. That's what makes this stance work on both hands, the bent knee. It can't work if your feet are lined up in relation to the target, or if your knees are straight. It's just not going to work. So again, we look at the variables. Hands, elbows, shoulders, head, knees. All those are examples of what is absolutely necessary to throw a successful punch and keep yourself safe. So from here, we jab and come back. The cross. If you're going to do a, cross, uh, a jab cross combination, and this is what we're going to do here anyway, um, as one hand comes back, the other hand travels forward. We're not doing the one-two like this. One, two. We're doing this. One, two. Notice how the body always comes back to its neutral position of hands up, elbows in, knees bent. Always. So, again, this is how I punch. Once you finish that punch, circle out of the way. Whether your weight's on your back leg or your front leg depends entirely on the situation you're in. I wouldn't worry about that too much because that will come with training. But the initial jab and cross combination, which is probably the most important thing you'll ever use, is absolutely valuable. 
in terms of using this in combination with uppercuts and crosses, or excuse me, uppercuts and hooks, if I throw a jab here, I come into the cross, I can do either a hook or an uppercut. That depends again on the target, what's open, what I have available. If I come in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push off the back leg, pivot the front leg on the foot to turn the body into the hook. The hook is done here. Notice the shoulder blocking the chin, covering the chin so you don't get nailed. So when we do this, the shoulder comes up, hook comes around, circle around, back. So you can do hook, cross, hook, uppercut, notice the uppercut, you drop for the uppercut. It doesn't have to be much, but if you want body, the entire power of the body into it, you're going to drop and stand up into that uppercut. But uppercut, ideally, is going to be at about a 45 degree angle. The reason for this is because you're not just using the uppercut on the face, you're using it on the body as well. So if I throw an uppercut here, this is my position. Here. Drop down, lift. First two knuckles only. If I'm going to the body, I'm going to drop down and shoot it straighter. It's going to be not quite 45 degrees, probably closer to 90. That's okay. When you think about the different combinations, there are quite a few of them. We have jab, cross, hook, uppercut, back knuckle, reaching. All these techniques are available in the arsenal. And the idea here in karate is that we're not just boxing. We're using boxing techniques to augment our skills in karate. Boxing is an extremely effective art for what it is. In this case, in boxing, you're only using your hands. That's okay. I have succeeded against many people who have used both their hands and legs while I only used my hands. The reason for that is because I've damaged my legs on a couple of occasions and couldn't use them. I learned to use my hands. So, again, we have one, two, three, four. All these motions need to be practiced over and over again. One of the ways I practice for the uppercut is to drop down under a line, stand up, uppercut, drop down, stand up, uppercut, over and over again. I do that until my butt feels like it's going to fall off my legs because that's what you need. That's part of your cardio training. As far as the hook is concerned, that is a combination effort of the entire body. Again, leading with the shoulders. One, two, three, four. You notice with the hook, the hand doesn't leave the face for very long. It actually is propelled along with the body from here until you're ready to make contact. Then it reaches out. That's when you reach out and touch someone. It can be very close. It can be here. It can be farther away. It can be here. In that case, it looks more like a roundhouse or a haymaker, but there's a big difference. Haymaker depends on these knuckles to strike. The hook depends on the first two. So, with the fist parallel to the ground here like this, palm down, knuckles up. This is how we're striking. This aligns the fist perfectly for your strike. So that's a little basic detail of boxing. When you put this together with the footwork, what you have is a very efficient method of working your way around a person, your attacker, in a way that doesn't jeopardize your footing, your balance, or your ability to execute the strike. And that's what really this is all about. Thank you.